also water forms hydrogen bonds with the polar solutes hydrogen bonds are readily formed between electronegative atom and remember electronegative atom is actually acting as a hydrogen acceptor and a hydrogen atom covalently bonded to another electronegative atom the second one is acting as a hydrogen donor while the first one is acting as a hydrogen acceptor the hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to carbon atoms do not participate in hydrogen bonding why because carbon is only slightly more electronegative than hydrogen so carbon is not a hydrogen donor uncharged but polar biomolecules such as sugars dissolve readily in water because of the stabilizing effect of hydrogen bonds between hydroxyl group or carbonyl oxygen of the sugar and the polar water molecules so this hydrogen bonding is of very utmost importance in any biochemical system you see here which are the common hydrogen acceptors and donors this oh is a hydrogen donor while c double bond o can be a hydrogen acceptor here also oh whenever oh is the donor a nitrogen can be an acceptor or oxygen also can be an acceptor this is remember a keto group while this may not be a keto group nh can be a hydrogen donor again any of these three groups can be hydrogen acceptors try to find out from which textbook is this figure obtained and this hydrogen bonds are the strongest when the participating atoms are in a straight line what does it mean let us see a figure you see this is oxygen this is a hydrogen donor this is a hydrogen acceptor this acceptor hydrogen and donor all are in a straight line so this hydrogen bond is a strong hydrogen bond this hydrogen bond is a strong hydrogen bond but sometimes they may not be in a straight line whenever they are not in a straight line that bond is not that much stronger yeah here is the example here is the example look here this is an oxygen bonded to hydrogen this oxygen is the hydrogen donor and this oxygen is the hydrogen acceptor but they are not in a straight line so this is a weaker hydrogen bond biologically important hydrogen bonds are shown here between the hydroxyl group of an alcohol and water this is very important in the case of sugars because you know sugars are polyhydroxy compounds then between the carbonyl group of a ketone and water again this is important in biochemical system between the peptide groups in a polypeptide how the different higher order structures of polypeptide chains are stabilized and they are also important in nucleic acids etc hydrogen bonds that is what is mentioned here this is a thymine which is a part of a nucleotide chain this is adenine the part of a complementary nucleotide chain look here here this nitrogen on the adenine is a hydrogen acceptor this amino group is a hydrogen donor between them there is a hydrogen bond this is they are in a straight line so this is a strong hydrogen bond this is an amino hydrogen this amino group is a hydrogen donor this is a carbonyl group this is an acceptor between so this is an a hydrogen acceptor so between this oxygen and this hydrogen there is a hydrogen bond 
and which of this hydrogen bonds is stronger remember these atoms are not in a straight line so this is a weaker hydrogen bond compared with uh, this one and uh, thinking about amphipathic compounds amphipathic compounds are compounds containing a polar or uncharged amon um, polar or charged group and uh, non polar regions when an amphipathic compound is mixed with uh, water you know that water is a polar compound the polar hydrophilic region of that solute or that compound favorably interacts with the, the solvent because solvent is polar and that part of the sol, uh, solute actually tend to dissolve in that polar solvent but the non polar part of the solute the hydrophobic region of the solute tends to avoid contact with the water this is very much essential in the digestion and absorption of lipids in the in the establishment of lipid <coughs> bilayer model etc this is very much important you might have heard of a hydrophilic head region in the phospholipids of the plasma membrane the head region is hydrophilic it can interact with water at the same time the hydrophobic regions are the hydrocarbon chains are hydrophobic in nature they cannot interact with water that's why this hydrophobic regions tend to interact with each other they tend to avoid water they tend to come together that is how these hydrophobic interactions appear from hydrogen bonds we are entering into hydrophobic interactions and they may form micelles you know you have studied in the digestion and absorption of lipids in that section upon digestion etc these lipids form a micelle you see how do they form a micelle or you may pronounce it micelle but better it is micelle this is a lipid it has a hydrophilic head region it also has a hydrophobic tail all these hydrophobic tails are coming together just to avoid water you see these are the water molecules because the in because in biochemical system water is the solvent so they want to avoid water so they are amphipathic in nature which means they have hydrophilic region this is the hydrophilic region and they cannot interact with the water where the hydrophobic region cannot interact with the water so all the hydrophobic regions have a tendency to come together and they will try to interact with the water only with their hydrophilic region that's why they form a spherical structure which we call micelle is it clear to you so the formation of micelles is actually because of hydrophobic interactions this is how lipids are dispersing in water only the hydrophilic region of the lipids come in contact with the water so the forces that hold the non polar regions of molecules together they are called hydrophobic interactions the strength of the hydrophobic interaction is not because of any intrinsic attraction between the non polar moiety actually there is no force of attraction between the non polar groups but it is because of the systems achieving greatest thermodynamic stability by minimizing the number of ordered water molecules required to surround hydrophobic portions what does it mean simply by the accumulation of the hydrophobic portions together the molecule is attaining greater thermodynamic stability and remember a molecule is in the stable conformation only when it is thermodynamically stable so spontaneously this lipid droplets attain a thermodynamically stable configuration by clustering their hydrophobic regions together and keeping them away from the water molecule so it is a spontaneous process and in the biochemical system many biomolecules are amphipathic in nature 
and how they are important. Remember, phenylalanin is an amino acid. These two regions of phenylalanin are polar in nature. They can interact with water. So whenever phenylalanin is present in a protein molecule, its R group has hydrophilic regions. These regions are interacting with water. Also, phosphatidylcholine. This is a lipid. This is a phospholipid. This phospholipid has a charged region here that can interact with water. It also has a charged region here. It can interact with water. That is how this molecule is actually forming a water interacting region, hydrophilic region that can interact with the water. Coming to Van der Waals interactions, they are also weak interatomic attractions. What are they? When two uncharged atoms approach each other, you know that electron cloud is there on the peripheral region. Electron cloud is always having negative charge. These electron clouds are influencing each other. How they repel each other. And random variations in the position of the electrons create a transient electric dipole which induces a transient opposite electric dipole in the nearby atom. What do we mean by this? An electric dipole, one region with a slight negative charge and another region with a slight positive charge. In an atom, what is the source of the negative charge? The electron cloud. What is the source of the positive charge? The nucleus. Keep it in mind. The two dipoles weakly attract each other, bringing the two nuclei closer up to a certain distance. This weak attraction is said to be Van der Waals interaction. As the two nuclei draw closer together, their electron clouds begin to repel each other. So their nuclei are attracting each other, thereby bringing the atoms closer towards each other. At the same time, the electron clouds are repelling each other and trying to repel trying to repel the atoms away from each other that means finally when these two forces are balancing these two neighboring atoms will come together up to a certain distance only and now we say each atom has a characteristic van der waals radius what's it a measure of how close that atom will allow another atom to approach it. Van der Waals radius. You see here, this is a symbol atom. It has an electron cloud in the periphery. It has the positively charged nucleus in the center. This is another symbol atom. They are coming together. You see, this is how an electric dipole is induced. All the electron cloud is accumulating to one side. At the same time, it is attracting the positively charged nucleus of the other atom, thereby creating a, a dipole, a transient dipole, a temporary dipole. Look at the distance, it is 5 nanometer or less. And these are the different weak forces, hydrogen bonds are there, between neutral groups, between peptide bonds, etc. Ionic interactions are there attraction and repulsion, hydrophobic interactions are there and also Van der Waals interactions are there. These are the different weak interactions in a living system. I told you each of the weak interaction is actually of, of a very slight magnitude but when, when millions of them are present in a molecule, in a vicinity, in an environment, they really have tremendous influence upon the stabilization of that molecule. That is what is mentioned here. Macromolecules such as proteins, DNA, RNA, etc. have a, a native structure, a stabilized structure because of these interactions. The most stable conformation, that means the native conformation is the one in which weak bonding possibilities are maximized. The folding of a polypeptide chain into its three-dimensional conformation is determined by its, uh, hydro, its uh, weak interactions. 
the binding of an antigen to a specific antibody is due to the specific cumulative effect of weak interactions. The binding of a hormone to its neurotransmitter, I mean the binding of a hormone or a neurotransmitter to its cellular receptor is because of such weak interactions. Again, the binding of a of a enzyme with its substrate also involves weak interactions. And at the molecular level, complementarity between interacting molecules reflects the complementarity and weak interactions between polar, charged and hydrophobic groups on the surface of the molecules. So the charges on the molecules play very important role in the stabilization of that living system. The next heading is ionization of water, we will see in another slide.